So you just bought Rust, and immediately after launching the game and joining a server, you are completely overwhelmed by all the different things on your screen. And before you can even move an inch off the beach, you've already been killed by another player. This game is too complicated. This game is going to take too long to learn, and the YouTubers and streamers make it look so easy, but I guess I'll just never be good at the game, is what you say. I know that when you first get Rust, getting good at the game and having fun moments like all these YouTubers and streamers have seems impossible. But I promise you, with the correct process, you can get to that level. All you need to do is get the basics down, and that's what I'm here for. My name is Peter, I've been playing Rust over 5 years and I have close to 4,000 hours in the game, and I'm here to give you a realistic and quick guide on all the basic things you need to know about Rust so that you can get out there and start enjoying the game. It's true that Rust can be very difficult at points and very demotivating with how brutal the game can be, but with the right information and the right strategy, you can learn how to play Rust, get good at the game, and enjoy the entire process. But enough with the intro, I don't want to be like every other YouTuber that tries to waste your time, but let's get straight into the tutorial. We're going to start here at the main menu of Rust. When you first get the game, the only thing you need to worry about is the play game button. Once you're on the play game menu, there's six different tabs to choose from. Because you're new to the game, you only need to worry about the first three tabs, those being the official, community, and modded tabs. Servers on the official tabs are exactly what they sound like, official servers owned and run by the Rust game developers. Community servers are servers run by members of the community, with some of these servers being vanilla and some being modded, and then modded servers are, of course, modded, with some being just slightly modded versions of the base game, to some servers being completely different game modes, such as servers built for aim training and other that give you creative mode so you can test your building abilities. Whenever you click on a server, you can see a brief description about the server, which most of the time will explain the rules, when the map wipes, and more. If you're new to Rust, I recommend first playing on a vanilla server with a lower population, so you can get a feel for the game without getting overwhelmed. Once you decide what server you want to play on, click the Join Server button, and you'll start to load into the server. Depending on how good your computer is, it can take a good amount of time to load into the server. Once you're finally in the server, you're going to be spawned on a beach with nothing but a rock and a torch. The torch is of course used to light up a small area around you, which is very useful at nighttime. By selecting the torch and right clicking, you can turn it on, and by left clicking, you can use it to attack. The rock is the most basic tool, and what you're going to use to get a start in this game. Select your rock and left click to attack, hold right click to aim and throw your rock. Now press escape and go to options, and then controls. This shows you what all of your hotkeys are for the different things in the game. Scroll down to the section that says inventory. This will show you what your hotkeys are to access your inventory, your crafting menu, and your map. In this menu, you can change your hotkeys to whatever you want. For me, tab is my hotkey to access my inventory, Q is my hotkey to access my crafting menu, and G is my hotkey to access my map. But these may be different for you. So by pressing Q, you can see the crafting menu. Here's where you can see everything you're able to craft in the game, and the material cost to craft each thing. And thankfully at the bottom there's a search bar where you can search for specific items rather than going through every tab trying to find what you need. By pressing tab, you can see your inventory. Whenever you farm something or pick something up, this is where it's going to go. The section on the left side underneath your character is your clothing section, and the section at the very bottom is your hotbar. You've probably also noticed by now that on the bottom right of your screen, there are three different colored bars. These represent your health, thirst, and hunger. When your thirst or hunger gets too low, your health will also start to go down. Your health will also go down if you get attacked by an animal or another player. To replenish these, you can find food in the form of mushrooms on the ground, corn and pumpkins by rivers, and you can also eat animals that you kill either raw or after cooking them. You can also find food crates in different monuments such as the supermarket. Drinkable water can be found in rivers, water catchers, or looted in food crates. Eating food can increase your health all the way if you eat enough, and drinking water will increase your health to a certain point, but not all the way. By pressing G, you can see your map. You can see roads, rivers, different monuments, shops, and different biomes. Roads are these gray squiggly lines, rivers are the wide blue squiggly lines, and each monument is labeled whether they be on land or out in the ocean. But be careful, some monuments will give you a high dose of radiation if you go too close to them without the right gear. Shops are these green dots which you can hover over or click on to see the different deals, and the different biomes have different colors with grass being green, snow being white, and the desert being yellow. Like I said, your rock is the most basic tool that you have. Hit trees with this rock to get wood, and hit nodes to get different materials such as stone, metal, and sulfur. But make sure you hit nodes that have this specific shape. Since you can't farm just anything that looks like a rock, you'll also notice there's a red X on the trees and a little shiny spot on the nodes. Hit these to farm material quicker. You can also find these hemp plants all over the place on the ground. Press E on these to harvest them and you'll get cloth. Cloth can be used to craft bandages which slowly heal you. Cloth can also be used to make sleeping bags which act as a respawn point whenever you place them on the ground. And you can also make burlap armor which gives you a small amount of protection from players in the elements. You'll also notice in your crafting menu that once you've collected enough stone, wood, and cloth, you can craft more complex things such as 
as spears, stone pickaxes, stone hatchets, and bows. These can be used to deal more damage to enemies and get more materials while farming. Also by farming animals or players you can get bones, which you can then use to craft bone knives which are great for harvesting animals, and bone armor which is a good form of primitive protection. Now that you've learned how to farm, you know how to craft, and you know how to browse the map, it's time to build a base. For a new player, finding the right base location is crucial to enjoying your Rust experience. I recommend building near lower tier monuments such as the harbor, supermarket, or gas station. These areas spawn some crates where you can get some medium tier loot. There's recyclers at these monuments which allow you to break down items into raw materials, and most importantly, these locations are going to have other lower tier players around them. So theoretically, you won't have to deal with a bunch of players that have endgame loot while you're learning how to play the game. To build, you need a decent amount of materials, and you need to craft a building plan and a hammer. When holding your building plan, you can right click to see all the options and select what you want to build. To start, make sure you've selected the normal square foundation. When building, look for a relatively flat area. Make sure you have enough room around your starting foundation so you have room to expand. For example, if you build on the side of a cliff, obviously you won't be able to expand because there's no area there for you to build on. To start, I recommend making a 2x1, which is just two square foundations side by side. Place your foundations, and then with your building plan, select the doorway. Place one of these on your foundation, then select the wall and place these on every other spot. Finally, select the floor and place these as your ceiling. I know it sounds weird that the floor is the roof, but this is just the best way to do it. And this is your layout, but it's all made out of twig, which is very easy for other players to break. So by using your hammer, you can right click the twig structures to upgrade them. To start, you'll probably need to upgrade everything to wood since that's the next cheapest thing, which is good enough for now. Then you want to craft a wooden door and a key lock. Smack those down in the doorway, and now you're the only one that can access your base. But you're missing one final and very important thing, your tool cupboard. Craft a tool cupboard and place this in the corner of your base. This gives you something called building privilege, which means you're the only one that can build onto and around your base. Without this, someone could build a wall in front of your base and trap you inside. Along with building privilege, your tool cupboard, or TC, allows you to upkeep your base by storing materials inside of it. It also tells you what materials you need and how long you're upkept for. If you don't put resources inside your TC, your base will slowly decay and fall apart over time. Another thing to keep in mind is door camping. Players can sit outside your base and wait for you to leave. As soon as you open your door, they kill you, jump inside your base, and steal everything you have. To avoid this issue, you want to build an airlock. This is basically just another doorway in front of the door you already have. This way, if someone door camps you, only the outside door is open and they can't get into your main area. The easiest way to build an airlock is to place a triangle foundation in front of your existing doorway, place a doorway on one side, a wall on the other side, and a triangle floor is the roof. And then, of course, place another door and key lock in that doorway. Some other things you'll need inside your base is storage. To start, you can just build a small basic box with just wood. You'll also need a furnace. This allows you to cook the raw versions of metal, sulfur, and high quality metal. A furnace requires wood, stone, and low grade fuel to craft. You can get low grade fuel by either crafting it using animal fat and cloth, getting it from these red barrels on the road, or by cooking crude oil in a small oil refinery. Along with a furnace, you want to get a tier 1 workbench. This costs wood, metal, which you just got from your furnace, and scrap. Scrap is basically this game's currency. The most basic ways of getting scrap is by hitting barrels along the road, looting crates and monuments, and by recycling components. One slightly more advanced thing you'll want to know about is monument puzzles. Some monuments have puzzles you can do to get the best loot. These require a keycard, sometimes multiple keycards, and a fuse, sometimes multiple fuses. Each monument's puzzle is different, but the basic function of all these are putting fuse in a fuse box, flipping a switch, and then swiping a keycard. Most of these puzzles allow you to get the more advanced versions of keycards, such as blue cards or red cards, which then allow you to loot higher tier monuments. Another important thing to know about is safe monuments. These are monuments which are considered safe zones where you cannot be hurt by other players inside of them, your body can't be looted inside of them, and generally these monuments offer different things such as shops, food, water, recyclers, oil refineries, workbenches, research tables, and more. These monuments include the fishing village where you can buy boats, fishing equipment, and diving gear, outpost where you can buy a bunch of different stuff, use recyclers, an oil refinery, and more, and bandit camp where you can buy mini copters, gamble your scrap, and use recyclers. On some servers, bandit camp and outpost are combined into one monument, so if you don't see one of them on the map, that's why. But if you're not sure where to go, what to do, or if you just want a safe place to stay at for a bit, these monuments are great. And that is all the basic information to starting Rust and some other information that I wish I knew when I started playing Rust. If you're interested in learning more about Rust and seeing more tutorials on how to improve at Rust, make sure to subscribe down below because my goal with this channel is to provide genuinely useful information about Rust for all of you. That's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Later.